Three, two, one. How do we start these? Best out of three. <laughs> on my, on my, on my Ooh. surgery. On da 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 da. Schism. Like that schism intro. <laughs> That's not the one. Noom. Hi, brother. JP Took. How you doing? Good. Um. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. I was just thinking about that time that I ran uh, ten miles for the mm -hmm. first time. And I was, I had read about the runner's high, and I was hoping to experience that. Because I had never run more than maybe six miles before. And I didn't enjoy that, but I thought maybe around mile eight, I would, I would get that buzz. Yeah. And really, miles six through ten were just, each mile was worse than the last in terms of discomfort and pain. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it since. Uh, I've run ten miles since. Yeah, but it was broken up. Like, I, I, I ran ten miles straight, straight once. And, and you wore like a ton of warm gear and like it was really cold and you sweated your butt off. Yeah, yeah, I could have I could have probably planned a little better yeah. for sure. I'm sure I know all that stuff matters. Um, you just ran 50 miles on uh, unpredictable, jagged terrain in cold weather. Mm -hmm. And this is coming off of a marathon, which is 26.2 miles. But that was a year ago. That was a year ago. And... Before that, half marathon. Yeah. So, and you haven't been running long distance since you were, like, a kid. This is something you picked up relatively recently. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. Maybe almost two years ago. Yeah. So not long. Right. And um, I think I know the answer already, but how would you explain why you do it to someone who thinks that you're completely crazy? That's a good question. Um, I mean, the, the obvious is just, it's a challenge, right? Challenge yourself, see how far you can go. What could come after that? Um, just in regards to, okay, what's next, you know? And then, um, after this last one, I didn't ever want to do that again. Now I want to again. Um, uh, so there's always something new, I guess, on the back end of it that you don't, you, you didn't know was going to happen as a result of doing it. And then it's like, oh, here's this new thing uh, that I gained from it. And um, I guess a big part of it is like, well, how am I going to feel when I'm done? And I look forward to that kind of unknown um, by, by completing something like that. But during is just, I mean, prob probably the same reason anybody that, that does any type of big physical feats i guess um you enjoy the process you enjoy the training the gear that goes into it reading reviews on midsole material at least i do because i'm a nerd with stuff like that i know some people don't but the whole journey of that is is really fun and then just while you're running um just the being able to look inside and think about your life and your people and what you're grateful for and all that stuff. Did you did you think you were going to <clears throat> pick it up? Like when when did you think you wanted to take it more seriously? Like because I know you had started running. Mm -hmm. um, just probably I don't know if you were just doing it for health or just recreation. But when when did you decide like I want to do a competition? I want I want to test myself um, in an actual race. Yeah. Like what? When did you when did you start <clears throat> taking it more seriously? Well, my friend Ted, who's been running uh, pretty competitively now for a few years, he was a big reason. And then, like we talk about all the time, David Goggins and his book was a huge reason to start initially. Mm -hmm. But I had no desire to compete in anything with it. Um, and then Ted was just like, "Hey, you should come do this 10k, which is the first one, which is like just a little over six miles." Mm -hmm. And I did way better in that than I thought I was going to. I just kind of wanted to try to get a decent time. I ended up getting a, a pretty awesome time. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave me the bug. Yeah. Right? And then that's when I was like, okay, well, I did that one. The next one I want to do is further. Right. And then after finishing the second one, which is the half marathon, so I was like, okay, I don't really want it again. And then two days later, you know, it's like, okay, the full one's next. Got to do the full one. Yeah. And then just kind of snowball effect after that. And then, so you did the full marathon, and you did a really good time in that one as mm -hmm. well. What was your What was your average, like pace for that? It was one? Se seven and a half minute pace. So you did a seven and a half minute. So I think pace. it was a uh, three hours and eighteen minutes. Right. 
or 319. Can't remember, but it was okay. seven and a half minute pace. And I feel like that's like marathoners are sort of they're fairly common. Like in terms of people that run, that's kind of a big goal for a lot of them. Like right. a lot of them want to do I want to do a marathon. You know, you'll mm-hmm. hear people say half marathon and marathon. And then there's way fewer people that want to do more than that. Yeah, I didn't realize, like, the the 50-mile one, I thought it was going to be at least a 1,000 people because this is one that's been going on for years. Our uncle actually did did it, like, three or four times, I think. He did the 50K, so it's, like, 31 miles, right. yeah. which is still crazy far, you know, for mm. trails and ups and downs and stuff. Um forgot the question <laughs> or, or what or what you said, leading said up well, to yeah that. well because a lot of people like to do they have a goal oh, they, the amount of people right yeah and so, then yeah. there's a huge i think i mean i'm just going by what i what i imagine what i hear people talk about yeah the you have to sort of follow the racing world to even hear people talk about running a 50 miler it's not just common like to me everybody's heard the word marathon right and they just know like oh a marathon yeah that's something a lot of people do yeah 50 miles is something that not a lot of people do. Like it's not right. something like, oh yeah, I know lots of people that have done a fifty mile race. Yeah. It's not. It's not a common goal that very many people have. Right. Because it's. I mean, it's brutal. Yeah. Right? It takes a lot out of somebody to. I mean, to do a marathon is one thing, but to do practically double that. Right. Is a very selective, fewer. Yeah, it's a really fewer. small group. Way smaller than I thought, and I didn't find out that until I think yesterday when I got the results in on the email. Yeah. That only 114 people out of about 140, roughly, uh, completed it. So, so there were like a lot of people didn't like finish a fifth too. Or so didn't even finish. Yeah, yeah. And then the marathon in the Woodlands last year, around this time last year, um, that was like 3,000 people. Right. So way less than I thought. Yeah. I was not expecting there to be so few people doing it. Why did you, um, like, what made you want to jump? Because you, it's not like you've did, you've done, you done one marathon, mm-hmm. and you jumped immediately to the fifty, the fifty mile. Yeah. Um, was that just like, kind of a test to yourself, or are you were you really driven to achieve something that you knew was, you know, much more difficult than what you had just done? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Like, a lot of people have done a full marathon. Right. Right? I, I, You know, very, very few people have done 31 or, like, a 50K or more. Mm-hmm. And I think once you start to get into, like, the 50-mile territory, it's, like, point zero 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 one percent of people have actually done that or completed it. Right. So, it's a few things. It's the challenge, of course um knowing that you completed something like that and being in a, just such a tiny group of people who have finished it mm-hmm. um being competitive about it is a whole different level which I'm happy I decided to kind of be competitive with it cuz I got a decent time for that too which is still way slower than I thought it was going to be but still finished What did you what did you place? 24th overall out of 114 people who finished. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, so so Better place than I thought. Slower, way slower time than I thought, but much better place than I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a combination of just completing something like that, knowing how far your body can actually go when mm-hmm. it wants to give up, but then your mind can carry on and go way beyond that. Right. Which is a big part of Goggins' book. Right. Yeah. I think it's like the the whatever the sixty percent rule or the forty percent rule. Like when you think you're done, you actually have. 40% left in the gas tank mm-hmm. or 60%. I can't remember which one, but right. when you do think you're done, you can actually still do it probably 10 more times over. I've heard, yeah, I've heard without that, dying. I've heard that with different, uh, different percentages because mm-hmm. some of this is probably arbitrary and opinion and most not, of it. not advice to people on how they should work out all the time. Yeah. But I think the idea is basically that your, your brain is sort of telling you to stop going to preserve what you have. But when you reach that point, you actually can dig deeper into more of a primal instinct, and you can you can push yourself much further. Right. Um, you know, all, all, but you almost have to dig into, like, hey, this my life depends on it, sort of um, mindset. Yeah. And I think that's tough to do because your life doesn't depend on it. Because yeah, you, exactly. you can quit a race. Yeah. And you yeah. can quit uh, a challenge that you know no one's chasing you with a gun to kill you. Right. There's no major consequence. Your family's going to be okay. You're not going to 
you know, nothing bad is going to happen if you opt out. Yeah. And so you have to kind of dig in and say, like, why do I want to do this? And you're not being paid or being, like, celebrated. That's what I was saying. You know what I mean? Like, you you volunteer to take to do the race. And at the end of it, there's a guy in a gorilla suit, like, ringing a bell. And, <laughs> yeah. And me and a couple of, you know. Here's your medal. Yeah, here's your medal. Now get out of the way for the other one. <laughs> yeah. So there's not, there's not a it's huge not a celebration. Big deal. Yeah. But what's it like on the inside for you, though? Because you're not doing it for, I mean, you're doing it for, for you. Like, what is the... What's the feeling when you when you cross the line and you're you're completely physically done and you know you finished it? A lot of a lot of things. Um, kind of back to like the why in the first place, right? The challenge is is awesome. Completing something that very few people have. Um, but the the whole journey of it too, just enjoying like being in the middle of the woods. There's no one around. You're you're hearing your breath. You're hearing the the pine cones crushing under your feet and you're really like in tune with everything. Mm. Um, that's why I think after a while, it's a combination of wanting to be totally present and not be distracted by any music or anything. Yeah. But I tried listening to music for a little while and it just ended up pissing me off. Oh, like, God, this, this sucks. It's, it's <laughs> an actually annoying me and it feels like it's taking away from it. That's interesting. Cause I usually, I prefer running with music, but I've never run that far. And, and yeah. usually, you know, for a few miles, it can be a motivator. You totally. Know, On shorter into... runs, it's great to have. Yeah. It, it can it can take away a lot of the tediousness of it, I guess, and um, kind of just get you in the zone. And you can focus more on the cadence of the music and everything versus, like, the pain in your legs and stuff like that. But it's it was easier. not that effect on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like... It's easier to visualize the finish line of three miles or yeah. five miles. Yeah. Because even one mile, you're like, okay, I just got to do that four more times. Right. Um, and I know that's a big part of casual running. Like with every step, you can say, you can think, I'm a little closer to the end. I'm, you know, I can visualize being done soon. But you can't do that on a 50 mile race until you've already run 45 miles. Yeah. So what are you doing? So you would run, so you would run the marathon. You know, you did fine. You did you did great during that time. What was the difference? Like, let's say after that first half of the 50, what was it like then? Because that's got to be, that's when you don't know really what it's going to be like because you never run right. that far before. Right. What did you go through, let's say mile, you know, approximately 26 through 50? What was it? What was the difference between that and the regular marathon? Um. I mean, a, a ton. I mean, the whole thing was completely different in the first place just because of the uneven terrain and you can't be lazy about one single step or you're going to bust your butt. So that was a completely new and different dynamic that you can't really... That, that's one thing, too, I think we should kind of say. is like it wasn't a regular run. It wasn't like like the marathon, you're running mostly on flat, flat concrete. Yeah. And he, out here, you're running a 50-mile trail run. Right, with... with roots sticking up like a foot and probably like i was telling you before when we were talking about it probably 85 percent of the trails are roots that are like a foot tall out of the ground because so many people have been running it so long it erodes away a lot of the dirt but you yeah. can't erode away roots sticking up so they How become more and more are exposed like, are people tripping and falling yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure i mean Jeez. i i almost ate it uh, I twisted my ankle pretty bad. I rolled it over. Uh -huh. That hurt pretty bad right at the very beginning. Um, and then I almost ate it. When I was training for it a couple weeks prior, we were running on the same trails. I did wipe out there pretty bad. Yeah. But I did a forward roll. Jiu-jitsu helped me <laughs> out. Um, but I got pretty lucky on this because I did the whole thing injury-free. Yeah. I think that's pretty lucky, even if you are paying really, really close attention. But yeah, lots of uneven terrain, lots of turns and, and a bunch of elevation changes right so okay. not mountains or anything but but hilly and that but you you told me i think that you weren't when you ran this when you weren't that exhausted during the first half you felt right good. so yeah after 26 my so between you know halfway and 35 to maybe 38 miles i was intentionally not paying attention to how many miles I've done. Oh. I don't like knowing that at all until right. I know I'm like within the last four or five miles. And then it's like, okay, now I can relax a little bit and push it. And I feel like I'm not going to uh, just die at any moment now. But 
Yeah, twenty mile twenty five through thirty five or thirty eight mm-hmm. was probably the best. Like your best time. That's when I ate like a bunch of pancakes and sausage and <laughs> bacon cheese tacos and all and pickle juice and all these different things to fuel up. And I feel and they had great. those on the run. They did, yeah. So every five miles, there's aid stations. There's a. Are you stopping of... to eat, or are you like running and grabbing and? No, I mean, I, I, I would, I would only completely stop to fill up my uh, bladder on my water vest. Oh. So I would have to take that out and fill it up and tie it back up and right. So I have to stop for that. But for the food, um, I would just grab it and walk while I ate. Right. And walk for two or three minutes, and then carry back on mm. right but yeah 25 to 35 or 38 i probably felt the best because at the beginning i was super cold yeah because it was what was it like 30 or 31 that day i think in huntsville yeah i think by the time you finished it had warmed up to maybe 34 yeah yeah so it's really cold but at you the very started beginning 6 30 in the morning right yeah so pretty cold at the beginning then i got pretty comfortable i had to take off several layers um that was an interesting thing I haven't experienced too because I'm down to just like super thin leggings, shorts, uh, just a very thin like fishing style shirt mm-hmm. and a super thin windbreaker over that and that was it. Right. Which if you stopped for like more than one minute, you start to freeze immediately and well, it's like painfully how, cold. Like but when you get to moving it, it's the perfect temperature. It felt wonderful. Right. I was really worried about it being that cold, but it actually ended up being perfect. And I think we were talking about that because um, I like to do much shorter runs in the cold as well. And it's surprising how warm you get when you when you just move your body. Yeah, you acclimate like within just a few minutes. Yeah, when we were out there waiting for you, it, it was miserable because our hands were numb mm-hmm. and our feet were numb. Yeah. But we're not moving. Right. And when you crossed the line, I was like, look, he's not, he's wearing almost nothing. Yeah. You know, just running across. And, and you were fine. And until, then I got super cold. And then you got super cold. Just a couple minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, the cold helps. Cold helped tremendously. Bit, yeah. yeah, helped a ton. I didn't think it was going to. I was actually kind of freaked out about it. Like, what am I going to do when I start to sweat and it's that cold? Then I'm going to get that much more cold because of all the sweat. But it ended up just being perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, 25 to 35 felt awesome. Mm-hmm. And then after, like, 35, 38, then things got pretty dark. <laughs> right uh, that's when i was like screw the music screw the books i only want to finish at this point and now i'm kind of miserable yeah and i had to really get into like a weird zone to finish that uh-huh. um and i really wanted to make it a point on that last 20 mile loop to not stop at all yeah right so i just wanted to keep going and get in the zone and that ended up taking me to like a kind of a dark place where i was I made sure there weren't people around, but then I would just kind of cuss out loud yeah. and cuss at the roots, and <laughs> it was a weird uh, time frame to feel that way. Sure. And uh, I got like really emotional a few times before I finished, and then I got emotional when I finished, and I don't know why I wasn't I wasn't thinking so much about things that would make me normally feel emotional. I guess mm-hmm. it just like it was just there. It was just like this. Things, you well, know? I mean, it makes sense to exhaust your body that much and then to demand yourself to keep going. Yeah. Is, um, you know, you, you mentioned like you went to a dark place, and I think that's a place that we all have that we kind of keep suppressed yeah. within us. Yeah. And well, it's hard to get there, too. Yeah, it's hard to get there, but it's not. It's not always, I don't believe, a source of... It's not a source of evil. It's just a part of, like, who we are. Like, everybody has yeah. a dark part of their who they are their personality sure. and we have to make we have to decide how we use that energy yeah and then you you know you see people that suppress it and then one day they blow up and they do something terrible or right. violent or they just become you know uh, the wrong person because they don't channel that energy the right way yeah instead of harnessing it it comes out and it, it can come out in a really negative way right yeah so what mile or patch of miles were the worst was it was it like would you say like 38 till the finish or did it get better or was it just did it just yeah. suck the hole all the way to the end well around that 38 mile mark we were talking about this a little bit too it, it felt like and it was within a couple seconds it felt like a super hot heavy wet blanket just fell over me yeah and i was like holy crap all of a sudden i felt like i was super heavy 
right. and my legs are all noodly and weird. And I actually started having in my mind all this self doubt talk, mm-hmm. right? And it's like you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't finish because this could be really bad for your body. Mm-hmm. Um, I started thinking about like, well, what if my immune systems like stopped working and I got really really sick as a result of this? What if my legs are too numb and I'm actually fracturing things that I can't feel? If I do hit a root right now, I'm going to wipe out bad and probably not be able to like fall with it or roll with the fall. Something bad's going to happen. So there was a ton of negative yeah. doubt and self-talk and um, all these things telling me kind of like um, it's okay to go ahead and stop because the reward for this is not really <clears> there. <throat> it's kind of self-preservation. Really like you're, you're, it that's, is. Your, that's your body's job is to yeah. preserve energy and, and it's, take care of itself. Yeah. It, it was weird as kind of like that primal part of your mind. Part of it is like that self-preservation like you're talking about telling you like it's okay to stop. And all these sissy, you know, things coming at you like it's okay. You don't need to finish. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. You're not going to win anything. And then the other primal part, it's like the good and evil on, on either side talking to you literally. Yeah. Because the other side, you have to kind of turn into like a... You have to become pretty egotistical mm-hmm. in your mind right. and tell yourself, like, you're bad to the bone. And, and But I'm hearing myself say these things, and I'm like, no, you're not. You're just, you're just a pretty average guy who's not really that bad to the bone. There's way tougher people who have done way more things that you'll never do. So it's weird. It's like this battle of good and evil talking, but I kind of had to focus on that egotistical yeah. part of it for a little while, even though I'm not really egotistical at all at least i try not to be well, it's almost like it's but you not, have to to yeah. to complete something like that you have to tell yourself you're awesome and well it sounds blow like yourself it, up. it sounds like more of like a like a strategy it's like yeah. you have to yeah. find whatever it takes to get the job done yeah and you've got to dig deep pancakes and, and sausage aren't going to do it for you <laughs> the whole time i bet they helped though. they helped a lot yeah <laughs> um when did you know because you said you didn't pay attention to the miles yeah when did you know? Was it just because of the terrain you had already seen? Like, when did you know? Like, okay, I'm I'm on the final run. Like, I'm I'm nearing the end. And was that motivational, yeah. or was it just the same? Uh, it was it was both. Um, it was because because the first loop was one ten mile loop, mm-hmm. and then you did two twenty mile loops after that. But both of those were the same. So I did start to recognize a little bit of those things. And I, I recognized some things from just running it as training before, you know, a few weeks before going there. Um, so I remember coming up like this big hill and then seeing the lake. And I was like, okay, I know that I only have a couple miles left. Yeah. And that's when everything changed momentarily. And I was like, okay, there's I can see the finish line and I can see the park where everybody's at. Therefore, I'm really, really close. But that ended up being like, remember I, I called or some, I think I called mom. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm almost done. Yeah. Try to come out. Oh, good. We're freezing. Hurry up. Yeah. And then it ended up be, being like another 45 minutes because I was actually like seven miles away. Because you had to run around that stretch of the lake. And I didn't run completely trails. around the lake, but, but it went in a bunch of different directions. It wasn't just a good circle around the lake. Yeah. You know, it was... It was everywhere. It was a jagged one, yeah. And that's when I got real mad. Yeah. <laughs> I was pissed. Like, did you remember when you got to a new stretch where it was like, oh, yeah, damn yes. it, I have another, yes. I forgot about this. Yeah, I, I definitely did because I started yeah. recognizing things and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember getting to this spot thinking I was really close and then remember, oh, yeah, this actually is going to take me a lot longer. <laughs> so, yeah, I was pretty, pretty angry and pissed off from... Yeah, 38 miles to the finish. I remember when... Um, and the finish wasn't like, oh, yeah, I'm done. I was just like, yeah, this just sucks. <laughs> I just want to go sit down and not really talk. And I just don't want anything. I remember asking, like, do you want to you go out to eat? And you're like, no, definitely not. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was interesting. So the finish, and, and I watched in the video, like, you, you couldn't have faked a normal face if you had to yeah your face was completely exhausted right it was like somebody was it was like you know somebody was just pulling on your eyes and pulling them down and everything was drained and you can only smile with your mouth not with your eyes right right and mom when she talked to you when you called her say that you were finished right around the corner right around the corner (laughs) which wasn't seven 45 minutes later yeah um 
And uh, I said, uh, yeah, she said, so how did he... No, she said, he sounded different. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, yeah, like just exhausted, I bet, because he's really tired. And she goes, yeah, no, I, more like delusional. And I was thinking like, oh, I wonder if, I wonder what happened. Because I don't know, you know, what happens when you run that far. I wonder if you start like... Tripping out? Yeah, like tripping <laughs> out or hallucinating. Or or you just get that, your body starts breaking down and your brain has to preserve energy so it stops working. And, you know, you might lose touch with reality. Yeah. Um, which obviously you didn't. But did you did you have any moments where you were, where you felt a little bit detached? I know they talk about the runner's high, but I don't yeah. know if you... If you went through that, because, or if you went through that and then it was done and then you had the runner's yeah. low. No, it was everything. I think it was everything a runner could experience just given uh, everything you could go through while you're running, right? Because, I mean, I got hot at moments just because that early on I wore too much, mm -hmm. too many clothes. Um, obviously, just the distance itself is going to make you go through certain things, the elevation, the terrain where you're stepping and then there are some just long straightaways like i think there was one section of it that was seven miles just straight but there was a lot of real gradual up and down hill so yeah there, there were like really high moments where i'm just feeling amazing i'm like man i'm gonna crush the rest of this but i better not do that because i might blow up at mile 40 or something yeah so yeah, man, and a roller coaster of just different feelings and certain things would come in, uh, certain thoughts would come in, they would be gone. But but again, like I was talking about earlier, no matter what I started to think about or look at, I always had to come back to, as boring as it might sound to like talk about this, but I always had to come back to making sure I wasn't going to step on a route. Yeah. Right? That was like the focus. So that made it a little bit tedious because um, it was always where am i going to step where am i going to step make sure the the, the footing is perfect because anything could screw it up i mean a slight ankle roll at that point could screw the whole thing up yeah you know yeah especially being that close too did you get more cautious about yes needing to be certain because you well, you don't want to hurt your ankle at mile 46 and then now you can't finish the race yeah extremely cautious so yeah, lot, lots of good highs, feeling really, really good. Some lows, uh, well, a lot of lows of like, why am I doing this? This is ridiculous. I don't need to do this at all. I should only do things that I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the dark side would come in and then the ego would come in and be like, you could do anything. You know, this is nothing. You could do this 10 more times back to back as long as you had pancakes with sausage on it. <laughs> um, but... Uh, there were, yeah, there were moments where I definitely had the runner's high where my conscious was like over here watching JP only think about, only thinking about like, don't step on a route, but there were definitely moments, um, where I guess just my conscious was completely consumed by step in the right spot, but I couldn't feel my body. And it almost felt like the JP's conscious up here was looking at JP's meaty, you know, meat and bones moving <laughs> through the woods, but I couldn't um, feel that for a while. Yeah. So at, at you know, uh, especially towards the end when I knew I was finally going to finish, I was embracing like all the pain and it just all started to come at me. Yeah. Right. Like everything's hurting so bad. It's like when you know you're going to finish something, it's like, okay, it's it's okay to feel it all now. Right. To embrace all the you misery. You almost want to. You want to. You want it to all come together. Yeah, at moment. yeah. But there there was definitely several hours um, of in and out not feeling my body at all. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was, it really was like I was watching myself run through the woods because I didn't have like a physical sensation. Yeah. It was like my body was on autopilot and mm -hmm. I couldn't even feel the steps or or the pain or anything, which is great. Right. It's great to get in that zone yeah. because then you're like, man, I don't have to worry about pain or anything. I'm just kind of coasting right now. Right. right. I remember when you when you did finish and, you know, we're all watching and we're we're cheering and trying to make some jokes here and there. And um, I, I think at one point... Uh, I, I think the first thing you said, maybe the first thing you said was, I'm not doing that shit ever again. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like the first thing. Yeah. And I was thinking like, oh, wow, that was that was worse than I thought. Yeah. Because 
you've really fallen in love with this. Yeah. And it seemed at that point that you had had enough of running, at least totally. at least for that small window of, you know, physical exhaustion. Yeah. You were like done with the idea of it. Yeah. I was even thinking like, I'm not even going to run at all. Even like short recovery runs or anything for at least a week. Yeah. I don't even want to think about it. Right. Yeah. So how long did you take a break before you ran again? Two days. Okay. <laughs> so that was Saturday. And yeah. then, you know, we didn't work Monday. So I went for a pretty long run Monday. Right. And I went for a long run Tuesday and Wednesday too. Mm -hmm. Thursday I did like a bunch of weights and stuff instead of a run. Yeah. I guess I just didn't feel like it or I forget what happened, but it, it ended up being like too late. Um, so I just did some weight stuff, but. Yeah, Monday I did like close to eight miles. Mm -hmm. Tuesday I did almost 10 and it was like 21 degrees. Yeah. Which felt incredible. It was like, it was so invigorating feeling. I, I try to tell people that and they just think it's the like a stupid idea to yeah. go running in the cold. Well, you see people on the street. Like I saw a bunch of people and just giving me looks like, what a, what a jackass. Or they think you're on drugs or something. Or I'm just like, like an egotistical yeah. idiot. Like, <laughs> right. what is he trying to prove? But if I could talk to them, I'd be like, no, you don't understand. It actually feels so good. Like, this is such a great time to do this. I feel amazing. It's not about trying to look tough. I mean, I don't look tough out there wearing leggings and not a t-shirt anyway. I look kind of silly, right? Well, I tell people, like, if I, could, if I could give you a pill to make you immediately feel... The way that I feel after I finish a freezing cold run and yeah. get back in my house, they'd get addicted wanna, to it. You'd want to feel that way all the yeah. time, yeah. Because yeah. you just have it's just this, this like glow from head to it toe. Is. You, it's like your skin is just I don't know how to describe it other than than doing it. And we don't get the opportunity to do that much in Texas because yeah. it's normally hot even through the winter time. Yeah. And we had this huge storm come in, and obviously it wasn't safe to run where there may have been ice. Sure. But if you could do it safely. Um, I think there's a real fear associated with being out in the cold, a normal fear. Cause you, you don't want to freeze to death, but right. we're talking, we're not talking about anything, you know, being stupid, like staying the night, no, yeah, not it's at like all. go out and w just walk for a mile and see in, how you feel in lighter clothing Yeah, and then see how you feel Yeah, and try to avoid that temptation of just saying, Oh God, I hate it. I hate it. Just yeah. feel the experience without right. judgment so much of like shivering and stuff too i realize um is within your control yeah like if you just think about it and breathe deeply you can stop yourself shivering in just a few seconds right even if you are actually cold yeah most shivering is like you're almost trying to knock off the incoming cold like yeah. get away i hate it yeah and it's like it's not that bad it really right. isn't you can you can take cold your body's you and know, it's just so good for you it is it's so good to expose yourself to that yeah. And uh, like when we did that dip in the cold little creek in Colorado. Right. There's nothing that can simulate how you feel the rest of the day after doing that. Oh, yeah. Your energy levels are through the roof, but nothing like jittery or weird feeling from taking some type of stimulant or coffee or tea or something like that. It's just like pure, clean awesome energy I like think, i imagine like what kids feel but they don't when realize they get to go that play. yeah when they get to go play and, and it's not it's not just the physical feel it's like you're it's everything you're actually a little happier you, and you i think know? you're sharper yeah and yeah just the way you process things and probably even i mean i don't know if there's any studies on that but i, I bet a lot of things are heightened as a result of going through that well, it makes sense and i don't i don't have all the data but it makes sense that you can't dip into a cold pool without prepping your mind first. Oh yeah, you gotta clean. You can't. Or be, you'll freak out. Yeah, you can't be worried about anything else. You be like, all right, I gotta breathe, focus, and do this thing. Yeah. And the same thing if you go out, you know, in the cold for a run. Yeah. It's uncomfortable for a while. It, yeah. Of course, it's uncomfortable. But then something happens where you're like, oh man, it's it's cold on my skin, but I'm not cold at my core. Yeah. Like I'm warm. I'm right. actually starting to sweat. And then after, if you do it for a few miles, you actually feel great yeah you know you're actually like man i feel like i could go for a really long time oh yeah um and it's really energizing yeah it's incredibly energizing to run in the cold like you start running and once you get to that level of uh just feeling pretty good yeah you feel like you can just keep going forever so unless it's 50 miles and then it just sucks 50 miles <laughs> always sucks so speaking of 50 mile runs are you done with those no what do you have next? I thought I was going to be done. And then uh, 
a couple days later, went for a run, felt awesome in the cold, did a few more. And then my friend Ted told me about uh, another 50 because my friend, well, we talked about this. My friend Ted, um, he was going to do the 50, mm-hmm. but had to back out. He got really, really sick, like yeah. just a couple days prior to it. So his wife actually ended up doing it. And I ran with her for the first 13 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, which was really cool. Obviously, I wish Ted was there too, yeah. right? But I know Ted was really, really bummed. He wasn't able to do that. It would have been his first 52. Um, so he's doing another one April 3rd in Cat Spring, Texas mm-hmm. uh, at Brazos Bend Park. So I just enrolled into that one yesterday. So April 3rd doing another 50. Another 50. But this is going to be, I don't want to say way easier because it's 50 miles. No matter what it is, that's always going to be hard and it's going to suck. But it's going to be pretty flat the whole time. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, April 3rd, it's not going to be in the it'll low be, 30s. Yeah, it'll be but, nice, predictable weather, yeah. likely. And on Which I have surface. a feeling that the warmer it's going to be, it's actually going to make it worse. Maybe. I think even after doing that in the low 30s, that 45 or 50 degrees might actually start to get really hot after sure. uh, 20, you know, 25 miles I still got to imagine so. the flat surface is going to be better, though. You're, you can't imagine I, that? No, I have to imagine that the flat oh, surface yeah, is going you to be can, better. Yeah, I'm trying to think, too. I think mentally I'm going to be able to relax more and enjoy it a lot more. So Not that you, I didn't enjoy most of this run. It was yeah. it was incredibly peaceful for the, for the most part, just being surrounded by woods. Um, I like doing that anyway. I, right. I think you probably do, too, just going out into the woods and just yeah, being, just being there in nature. And not listening to anything, not getting on your phone, being a part of it. Um that it's does important. a lot of good. It's yeah. really important. It's yeah. For your health. Yeah, it is. Do you it doesn't so it doesn't sound like you're slowing down at all. Do you see yourself doing So this is like the first level of crazy, I would say, 50 miles. Yeah. The next level is like somewhere between a 75 and a 100, which we only read about in books or or hear about, you know, from somebody else talking. Um but obviously there are opportunities to compete in even longer runs yeah well the week before uh not that much right now it's kind of like on the back of my mind yeah um we'll we'll just we'll see right Right. but you know like what i said when i finished this like i'm never gonna do that again sure and then a couple days later i enrolled into another 50 yeah so i imagine something like that will happen once i complete this one that i'll probably want to do something longer right um possibly like a half iron man even though i don't ever swim or bike yeah but you could uh, that sounds appealing though yeah but um it's possible but like the week before the this one that i just did people did 100 mile Jeez. and that's like 16 to 20 hours you yeah. know but there's like men and women out there in their 50s and 60s completing it Right. I'm like, they just tra- that's it's incredible. Just, They've and, been doing it for a long time. And, and only, at that point, the, like the people that do the 100, I see them with like the like the ski sticks or just um, like the hiking. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the little grips. I saw a few of them at the run. Yeah. So I think people that do those hundreds take those with them probably for the last 30 miles or so. Because there's a lot more walking at that point, I think. Right. Well, I think in and really the differences, in, and there are some genetic differences. Everybody's born with their specific strengths and weaknesses you have your genetics and then you have your training yeah and what they all have in common is they decided to start training one day Mm -hmm. and then the fuel for that fire was probably entering a competition and i tell this to a lot of students um who are every you know we're all looking for shortcuts to improvement whether it's the sport we do or the life whatever goals we have and committing to a competition immediately forces you into a a state of mind where you have to focus on improving as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And I say that like as soon as you register for a jiu-jitsu competition, you immediately take your training more seriously. Oh, for and sure. The very next day you say I have to I have to get my training in. Yeah. I've got to sleep, I've got to eat right, I've got to make the whatever weight class I'm in. I want to be in shape, I need to take care of my body, stay hydrated. And well, I, th- I think there's an important uh, thing right there, too. You've said this many, many times to, I'm sure, hundreds of students over the years. Just go sign up for it. Yeah. Don't think about it. Just go do it. 
Right. And that's what I did with, with this, with all the races that I've ever done, really, because I think people get so caught up in, I need to do X, Y, Z before I ever even touch my toes in the water. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But that all is going to happen very organically and to the best of your ability when you just do that. Just do it. Yeah. And then all the other stuff is going to come very naturally. Like once I enrolled into that, it was almost just like the training came in my mind. Like, okay, this is all the things I'm going to do. And it became very easy and very apparent to like, this is what I need to do. And it wasn't hard to be disciplined with it because it was like, I know what I'm going to be doing. You've attached it to a goal. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the training for it became, it didn't make the physical part of it easier, but the mental part of it was totally clear. Right. And visualizing finishing. Sure. So I think the same goes for any jujitsu well, competitors and, and or, or it goes anybody. It the same thing. And, and what stops people from doing it is the fear of failure. It's yeah. like, well, what if I do it and I don't do well? Yep. And I'm sure, and that's normal. I still... I still have that feeling when I enter a tournament. What if I, what if I lose in the first round? And yeah. I'll even play in my head. What if I go out there and I lose, and then I come back, and you know, the student asks me like, "Well, how did it go?" And I have to, and I've even, I've even played in my head, like imagining what I'm going to say if I lost the first round before the the match happens. Yeah. Um, I don't do that so much anymore, but those, those thoughts are normal, but the. What's more important is the end result is you will be better at the thing you're trying to get good at if you commit to the goal. Yeah. So you don't know what place you're going to, you've actually done really well placement wise, but whether you placed as high as you did or not, you're certainly a better runner because of the challenge versus if you just did it recreationally. Yeah, for sure. You know? Oh, 100%. Like I don't, I don't know how much it would have taken to be able to go do that on my own without knowing I enrolled into a competition. Right. I don't know if I would have ever been able to just my own discipline by myself, nothing else going on to actually go do 50. Yeah. Probably so, but it would have been way harder as opposed to throwing yourself fully into it yeah. and like, okay, I committed. I didn't think about it. I just did it. And now I have to do everything it takes to, to do well, or at least just to finish. Yeah. And then all that training, yeah, just comes very natural. And I think now for the next one in April, now I know how much that training helped with this first one. So now I know what it kind of takes, but I guess uh, could be much more strategic about it now. And I know the things that maybe I don't need to focus on so much and things I need to focus more on and that thing that goes for jujitsu competition the, too you learn from all the mistakes well and the fear of the unknown sort of you know uh goes down a little bit because yeah i remember that my first competitions were more intimidating than recent ones even though the recent ones are more challenging mm -hmm. because i'm going with against better people i imagine it's the same for you in the beginning you don't know what to expect when you enter a competition yeah now you're doing races you're doing 50 mile runs versus the six mile run you did at the beginning and even though that's a big huge goal you you know more what to expect because right. you've been in the ring yeah so to speak right yeah so there's like a lot of mental pressure that has been diminished from just doing it yeah regardless of the outcome i'm very happy with the outcome but i think that that goes for anything regardless of your outcome you can remove a lot of the mental fear from it because you're like well I, I've, I've been here before yeah i have the experience so now i know what to do even better well this has been um real awesome talk very yeah. enlightening i love the parallels between really all sports all competition whether yeah it's you can find common ground with with all of and it. i think this has been uh super he helpful for anybody that's watching we didn't get to so. your um your shoe fetish because i know you own like a thousand pair of shoes but maybe we'll do <laughs> yeah. another episode. completely unnecessary but uh, <laughs> necessary for my interest right <laughs> <laughs> well uh we'll have to follow up after yeah. the next run for and, sure um good stuff cool see you guys Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to share this video with somebody else. Thank you.